Hello and welcome to the TR Business Video Channel. I'm here with Stuart Driver from Nestle International Travel Retail. Thank you very much for joining us today and taking some time out of your very busy schedule. Hi, Sharon. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about the focuses in terms of the brands uh, this year. I know there's a number of obviously pillar brands you're hoping to really promote in travel retail, and you've got some really innovative new products that you're sharing uh, with your with your retail partners at the moment. Can you run us through some of those, please? Absolutely delighted to. Um, so first of all, we always start with KitKat, our global number one brand. Uh, and we have some fantastic innovation this year around a, uh, a, a one year limited edition, let's call it, which will be KitKat Gold. Um, a fantastic quality product. We talk about break in style. And uh, no, fantastic innovation, very proud of what we're gonna be bringing to market with this one. Beyond that, we've also got some seasonal innovation with some uh, Christmas innovation for 2020 on KitKat. First time stepping into seasonal activities with a uh, Christmas uh, giving Santa a break on, uh, on KitKat. So taking care of where we're at with KitKat, with Nestle Swiss, we continue to build upon the fantastic uh, launch of the indulgent tablets last year with a, a new dark chocolate and blueberry uh, yes. flavor, which is, well, you've obviously tried it already, because yeah, you, uh, um, it's a really, we're really proud of it, and uh, I'm eating too many of them at the minute already, so I'm having to learn a little bit more self-control on that one. Um, particularly proud of the innovation we're bringing into play on Smarties, um, because there's a lot of innovation uh, gone on on the brand in the last couple of years around a value up agenda, around our learn through play initiative. So we started one whole access on our learn through play and really bringing um, added value to the, the consumer to trust for the mother of the father, um, but something which is engaging and to help the child learn. This year, however, we're making a first big step around sustainability and packaging. Mm -hmm. We started our sustainability journey back in 2009 um, with uh, Coco Plan on product, and we launched sustainable, uh, the, first, the first globally sustainable chocolate brand mm -hmm. to go 100% sustainably sourced was KitKat in quarter one 2016. Um, and we've rolled out beyond since. Mm -hmm. This year, uh, to come, I should say, for 2020, mm -hmm. we'll be making a move with Smarties to remove single-use plastic from all our packaging by the end of next year as a first step to removing all plastics from our brand by 2025 and moving to um, either reusable or recyclable across all other brands uh, by 2025. So some really significant innovation coming through particularly pleased and particularly pleased with the response we've gotten from our customers mm. to the uh, the sustainability step on Smarties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mentioned actually when you said you were having these meetings with uh, your retail partners that you were receiving a more emotional response when you were talking about Smarties and, and the sustainable efforts that you've made, which is which is enormously, well, it's, it's good for you and it's good for them and it's good for us all, isn't it? It was, it was uh, absolutely, Charlotte. It was heartwarming. Mm. Um, it, uh, normally when you're sitting down with a buying team and with professional buying teams, you get a you get a very professional judgment on the products that you're bringing to market. And they will say, we like this, price point could be better there, might be better bigger. And people judge it through a professional lens that we value. Mm -hmm. When we brought the Smarties and the sustainability story around packaging mm -hmm. to the table, we got a human emotional response, which was quite unexpected mm -hmm. and quite consistent across the board. Mm -hmm. And people saying, you're doing the right things, well done. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, it was a very uh, um, pleasing, on the one yeah, hand, yeah. reaction to get, but somewhat unexpected. I was going to say, was it surprising? Yeah, it was unexpected, because you're expecting the, a very, you know, every, you're, you're valuing, you're respecting that professional judgment that you get from the teams. Here we got someone that was very human, mm -hmm. and you saw the response, which was people looking at it as a, as a, as a parent, mm -hmm. and thinking about what their children will ask them in the future, so mm -hmm. what are we doing about these things? Mm -hmm. And here, it's one of the reasons we're extra proud about this, mm -hmm. is because we know that we're doing something that's going to help the cause. And it's the start of a journey, but it's a very positive first step. And speaking to the younger generations, which of course we know are very, uh, very vocal in their, in, Absolutely. In, their, uh, in, their in their displeasure at uh, the way that we are handling uh, foreign affairs policies and in, in, in terms of climate, climate change, you know, they're really speaking out and becoming very vocal, so e even more important. Uh, I think I'd also like to touch on the uh, 10 and 10, the, the target that you, you know, very uh, 
bravely announced. Uh, was it earlier this Yeah, it was, we started in March at ACI yeah. in Reykjavik. Yeah, tell, us, tell us more about how that's progressing and how people have reacted to that huge announcement. Uh, again, really positive to the response we've had. Mm -hmm. um, so very happy about that. We recognise that over the last couple of years, the confectionery, confectionery in particular, mm -hmm. has slowed down. It was an engine of a growth. Between 2004 to 2015, almost 14, 15, it was uh, confectionery and fine food, but particularly led by confectionery, was growing ahead of passenger growth, growing ahead of all the other categories. It was, it was an engine of growth for the industry. And it was led by a group of nationalities who were outbound more than they'd ever been before. Brazilians, Russians, certainly Saudis and Emiratis, and to a certain degree, the, the Indian community. And what was unifying across all this disparate and very in, a new, a different group of nationalities is they've all got a sweet tooth. Mm -hmm. The group of national, the nationality, the single one which is driving growth now, the Chinese. Mm -hmm. And the Chinese don't have that same sweet tooth that those other nationalities and ourselves all grew up with. Um, and it's suppressed growth. That's a reality. So we have to respond. And this is what Nestle sought to do in trying to really, number one, understand need states and better understand what consumers are looking for, shoppers are looking for, but also bringing to the party the, the breadth of the Nestle portfolio because confectionery is but one part of the, the Nestle armory. And in the spirit of confectionery and fine food, there are a number of other categories which are also then allowing us to drive growth. So there were two axes to it, one which is about a much deeper need state understanding mm -hmm. and we've had a fantastic response from a couple of our biggest customers we're really uh, and seeing significant momentum in terms of some of the thinking that we're bringing to the table mm -hmm. as well as um, from a results perspective people seeing the positive impact of the um, broader food category Absolutely. and the opportunities that's generating for the widest group so uh, from that perspective we're actually quite excited about the year to come Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. I know it's, it's limited at times like this. Your schedule is very, very busy, but thank you very much, and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Look forward to it. Thanks, Charlotte.